Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6004-1. This is an accounting of the further developments of SCP-6004. Statement from Site Director Alan Tibbles, June 5th, 20. Things haven't gone well. From the total loss of Australia, the discovery that it's eating us and vomiting us up as animals, and the veil of secrecy being annihilated, it has been a bad few months. I know many of you don't believe that we can turn this around. But you're wrong. The Foundation has always managed to tip the scales back to our favor. Time and again we have contained the uncontainable, and recontained it when it escaped. We have saved humanity time and again from extinction. We have handled the whims of mad gods and bent the will of world governments. We have restarted the world a time or two. So I say this. We will rebuild what this snake has destroyed. We will find its weakness, and we will lock it away. We will begin again using anomalous means until we are back on our feet. And when the work is done, we will help the world to forget the horror that we have faced these past few months. But right now the big job is still ahead of us. We are continuing to build upon our weapons and containment experiments. We are learning more every day about SCP-604, and we are getting closer to the answers we need. I just need you to dig deep, and do our part in bringing this thing down. Yes, it has shrugged off all our efforts thus far, and yes, it is attacking settlements on a near global scale now. But now the veil is down. We don't have to pull our punches anymore. We can throw all we have at it. We can take what we have learned in this document, forge it into a weapon and use it to win. Expansion of SCP-6004's Area of Activity in the weeks following the destruction of Sydney, Australia, SCP-6004 went on to not only attack all other major Australian settlements, but extend its range into Asia, Europe, Africa, and Antarctica, where it behaved similarly. While the Foundation and the Gork did make hundreds of attempts to stop, incapacitate, neutralize or otherwise contain SCP-6004 through various means, including but not limited to the use of key units, L-guns, high-energy concentration orbital railgun, HECO, and Class C to auto cannons, it continued to attack settlements with impunity, with the death toll believed to be in the billions. Worldwide, SCP-6004 has now lowered the average global temperature by 0.7 degrees Celsius, replenished glacial and polar ice, and refilled depleted lake and river systems. Much of the world's deforestation has been reversed, and dozens of species of wildlife have been declared no longer endangered or extinct. It is estimated that over 40% of human metropolitan areas, over 60,000 pop, have been rendered uninhabitable within SCP-6004's area of effect, and relocation projects have been made a priority. Due to SCP-6004's targeting of dams, coal-fire plants and large cities, numerous temporary solar power arrays and nuclear power plants have been erected worldwide to cope with power demands, and both the Foundation and the Global Occult Coalition have resorted to anomalous means of food production to aid in the supply of rations to refugees. The handling of governments worldwide has become a priority, as many nations have moved to defend themselves from SCP-6004 militarily. The Global Occult Coalition has volunteered to use its United Nations channels to manage the issue, with the focus being on ensuring global government's priority is on the rescue and shelter of citizens rather than the bolstering of military forces, which has thus far proven ineffective at best and provocative at worst. While media suppression was possible in the weeks immediately following the emergence of SCP-6004, 
albeit extremely difficult, the expanding area subjected to SCP-6004's attacks has made it impossible to conceal the truth from the eyes of the world. As of now, the veil of secrecy is to be considered broken and no further efforts to conceal the existence or effects of SCP-6004 are being made, as this has been deemed a waste of Foundation resources. It is hoped that the lowered global population may aid in global amnestization programs in the event that SCP-6004 be successfully contained or neutralized. Addendum 6004-4 Table of locations visited by SCP-6004 The following table has been made for the purpose of determining a pattern of behavior in regards to SCP-6004. For the sake of brevity, hundreds of examples have been omitted, with more data to be added as events unfold. Location Description Events Death Toll Notes Canberra, Australia Capital City Direct Attack SCP-6004 landed on the city and rapidly struck at it with its mouth, accompanied by hurricane force winds and thunderstorms. 197,728 SCP-6004 appeared to target Parliament House in particular, a trend seen reflected in subsequent attacks on capital cities. Sydney, Australia Coastal City Environmental Attack SCP-6004 remained in the clouds, only striking the ground occasionally while tsunamis flooded the city. Severe winds and storms also in effect. 3,129,428 The offices of major mining and oil companies, specifically Rio Tinto and BHP, were specifically targeted with physical strikes from SCP-6004, as was the area of Rush Cutters Bay. Temperate forests rapidly took hold following the event. Hong Kong, People's Republic of China, PRC, Island City Direct Attack, following multiple days of severe storms and monsoons. SCP-6004 dropped its tail into the sea and swept multiple massive waves at Hong Kong Island before landing its entire mass between Hong Kong Island and Kowloon. 6,284,300 multiple waves were reported to exceed 200 meters in height. Despite the thoroughness of the attack, multiple skyscrapers remain standing. Aral Sea, Kazakhstan slash Uzbekistan former lake refilled by rainstorms over a period of months nine lightning strikes and flood damage caused much of the Soviet irrigation systems responsible for the drainage of the Aral Sea to be destroyed, allowing water flow to return to pre-Soviet routes. Great Pacific Garbage Patch Garbage Patch A perpetual rainstorm has formed over the area. Plastics and other debris hit by this rain are observed to transform into multiple different forms of marine life, including fish, cetaceans, coral polyps, jellyfish and, redacted, zero it is estimated that the garbage patch will have been reduced to a negligible size by 2022. Three Gorges Dam, People's Republic of China, PRC, People's Republic of China, PRC, Direct attack. SCP-6004 directly struck at the dam from the air multiple times, destroying the entire structure. 406,184,000 following the impact, 37 billion cubic meters of water flood down the Yangtze River, with widespread flooding in the Hubei, Hunan, Jiangxi, Anhui, Jiangsu and Zhejiang provinces. Shashi City, Dejoba Dam, Jicheng, Jingjiang, Wuhan, Nanjing and Shanghai were all destroyed. Despite multiple drainage attempts prior to the attack, the perpetual thunderstorms to the north of the river caused by SCP-6004 had caused the dam's reservoir to be extremely full. Taichung Power Plant, Taiwan Coal Fire Power Plant Multiple lightning strikes entered the plant, causing a series of steam explosions. Unknown the precise nature of the rapid lightning strikes suggests that SCP-6004 is able to understand the plant's function by unknown means. Mount Kenya Glaciers, Kenya Glaciers all 11 glaciers, Northey, Krapf, Gregory, Lewis, Diamond, 
Darwin, Pharrell, Heim, Tyndall, Caesar and Joseph, atop Mount Kenya began rapidly expanding at the same time as SCP-6004 awoke. Zero it is estimated that all glaciers will return to pre-1890 levels by 2030. Myok Production Association, Russian nuclear processing plant SCP-6004 approached the Myok facility via the Tekka River before emerging and physically attacking and swallowing multiple structures, including multiple disused nuclear reactors and waste storage tanks. Thunderstorms caused rapid plant growth. Unknown following this attack, Foundation investigation has discovered that nuclear contamination in the region has reduced drastically. Sahel region, North Africa ecozone long periods of rainstorms formed over the entire region, triggering anomalously rapid plant growth and soil revitalization. SCP-6004 directly struck several communities, swallowing and transfiguring the inhabitants into wildlife. 993,000 an area of 650,000 square kilometers that had previously been seriously affected by desertification reverted to semi-tropical forest and bushlands. Lake Chad was seen to be greatly replenished. Congo Basin, Central Africa tropical rainforest slash river system widespread reforestation as a result of SCP-6004's rainstorms. Multiple settlements within the area previously within forest boundaries were attacked and the occupants transfigured into endangered wildlife. 48,500,000 an area of 148,460 square kilometers has been converted to rainforest in the Democratic Republic of Congo alone. Numerous endangered and previously extinct animals have been reported to be inhabiting the area in large numbers. Eastern Australian Temperate Forest Slash Grazing Lands Australia Former Forest Slash Grazing Lands SCP-6004 directly attacked grazing lands over a period of several weeks, consuming over 70 million livestock animals before rainstorms triggered the growth of native flora in the form of temperate forests. 300,000 wildlife regurgitated by SCP-6004 in this area has primarily been previously extinct animals, and has drastically changed the local environment. The presence of numerous specimens of carnivorous megafauna in the area has rendered the area unlikely to be resettled in the future. Antarctica Pole SCP-6004 flew over much of Antarctica causing increased snowfall and causing increased auroras over the southern pole. Increased snowfall resulted in the reformation of approximately 3 trillion tons of ice. Zero SCP-6004 was seen to circle Mount Sidley for 19 days. The reason for this is currently unknown despite Foundation investigation. Data redacted, data redacted, data redacted, data redacted, data redacted. Bengala Belize Lobi Totomboko Oil Platform, Republic of Angola Offshore Oil Platform SCP-6004 directly attacked the platform from below the surface of the sea, physically pulling it beneath the surface and repeatedly slamming it into the sea floor. Structure remnants rapidly converted to coral reef over the following months. 17 It is theorized that the immense pressure generated by SCP-6004's body mass crushing the station has effectively plugged the oil well. OK Teddy Mine, Papua New Guinea Open Pit Mine rainstorms formed over the mine pit and surrounding areas, but did not cause plant growth, instead detoxifying soil contaminated by mining waste. SCP-6004 approaches the mine via the Fly River and later the OK Teddy River, swallowing much of the contaminated riverbed. SCP-6004 then emerged and proceeded to fill in the mine with surrounding earth before departing. 13,273 rainforest regrew in the area following the attack. Pollution levels in the OK Teddy and Fly Rivers has dropped to nearly zero. Malagrotta Landfill Italy landfill thunderstorms appeared over the landfill, with the rains converting much of the waste into fungus, trees and insects. Zero a large portion of the waste was converted into wasps and bees, 
resulting in vastly increased natural pollination. Ganges River, India River SCP-6004 physically entered the Ganges Delta via the Bay of Bengal, attacking numerous settlements before swimming up the river at low speed over the course of 24 days. It was observed to have its mouth open, with its lower jaw scraping the riverbed and swallowing it, with its entire mass filling the river. SCP-6004 repeatedly attacked structures and settlements on the banks of the river. Multiple dams were destroyed, and millions of people were consumed. Notably, SCP-6004 did not harm the Ganga Mahasabha, an organization dedicated to the conservation and cleaning of the Ganges River, who were in the process of a tiger conservation operation at the time. During this attack, 250,500,000 military forces repeatedly attempted to intercept and attack SCP-6004 but were either ignored or crushed by SCP-6004. Following its departure, the Ganges River was found to be clean and heavily populated by fish and dolphins. Tanzania Wilderness Tanzania Wilderness rainfall over the area was reported similar to other areas affected by SCP-6004, but induced changes in local wildlife. Animals killed by human activities such as poaching and trophy hunting were observed to recover, in some cases multiple times. Unknown, estimated between 300 to 19,000 following wildlife recovery, massively increased aggression towards humans has been observed, with numerous reports of lions, leopards, hyenas and elephant attacks occurring daily. Himalayan mountain range, Asia River glacial expansion coinciding with the awakening of SCP-6004, rainfall rapidly reintroduced forests to areas affected by deforestation, and multiple settlements converted to wildlife with similar aggression and regenerative abilities seen in Tanzania, Siberia and the Ganges. 28 million numerous reports of SCP-1000 sightings in the region have been reported following attacks by SCP-6004. Tana Mera Palm Oil Project, Indonesia Palm Oil Plantation thunderstorms formed over the entire region occupied by the Tana Mera Project, as well as numerous other palm oil plantations, causing native vegetation to rapidly grow in an area exceeding 280,000 hectares. Native vegetation grown in this way was seen actively strangling introduced oil palms. SCP-6004 was observed to strike at workers on these plantations from the air, consuming them. 4,800 these areas were frequently revisited by SCP-6004 for the purpose of regurgitating consumed individuals in the form of native wildlife. Incident 6004-Beijing Forward Following the destruction of the Three Gorges Dam, foundation plants within the Chinese government reported significant unrest within the party. There was immediate mobilization of military assets not affected by the floods under the name of preparedness. Despite attempted foundation intervention, much of China's military resources were relocated to the Beijing including at least 80 nuclear weapons. Multiple attempts were made by both Foundation and Global Occult Coalition diplomats to discourage the CCP from antagonizing or engaging SCP-6004, citing the failure of India's military during the Ganges attacks and potential fallout, but failed to make progress and were eventually barred from discussions with the Chinese government. Multiple plants remained within the party and continued to relay information to the Foundation slash Gork Alliance. Rather than use further resources attempting to negotiate with China, it was determined that the Foundation would continue to prioritize the attempted containment of SCP-6004 in the development of Project Mongoose. At 4.23 p.m., the 27th of October 2020 Foundation satellites detected SCP-6004 was airborne and approaching the Jinjinji metropolitan region. Shortly afterwards, Site-40 received the following message from Agent Zhou Wei, who was embedded within the government. 
The Intelligence Bureau has spotted SCP-6004 approaching Beijing and a state of emergency has been declared. The party is in a state of panic. The military is on high alert and officials are talking about nuclear weapons. Please advise. Agent Zhou Wei was advised to attempt to discourage the use of nuclear weapons, and it was decided that an early prototype for Project Mongoose be diverted to the South China Sea via the SCPS Indominus, a high-speed heavy weaponry vessel designed to aid in the rapid response to high-threat entities, and attempt to incapacitate SCP-6004 before it could arrive in the Jingjinji metropolitan region. It was theorized that despite operating at 37% of the capacity of the projected output of the finished weapon, the prototype would be able to induce unconsciousness or a sleep state within SCP-6004. Recovered military footage Camera feed shows a battalion of soldiers readying to attack outside the city of Lhasa. Multiple artillery and rocket launch platforms can be seen, and it is raining heavily. Lightning frequently illuminates the scene. SCP-6004 can be seen approaching from the southwest within the cloud cover approximately 8 kilometers away. A sergeant can be seen in the foreground on a radio, requesting for Air Force support. SCP-6004's head dips below the clouds as it approaches. It visibly shifts appearance to resemble different species of ophidians simultaneously. It roars loudly. Multiple rocket platforms appear to be readied. The sergeant gestures to several soldiers and points at SCP-6004, which is rapidly approaching. Multiple gunships center frame, approaching SCP-6004 and opening fire. SCP-6004 does not react and continues northeast. A gunship is forced to take evasive action as a coil of SCP-6004's body emerges from cloud cover. SCP-6004's motion causes it to collide with the gunship, which detonates. An order to fire can be heard from the sergeant's radio. Eighteen ballistic missiles are seen being launched from the ground, entering the cloud cover, detonating above the clouds. Multiple soldiers can be seen staring at the clouds. Some can be heard asking one another if SCP-6004 has been killed. SCP-6004 emerges from the clouds at high speed, roaring and continuing northeast. Multiple lightning strikes hit the area, with most of the soldiers being killed instantly. Task forces operating out of multiple Chinese Foundation sites were mobilized to aid in the evacuation of civilians across the projected path of SCP-6004. As the evacuations were carried out, numerous Chinese Air Force combatants were dispatched to attack SCP-6004. Multiple eyewitness accounts reported SCP-6004 largely ignoring these attacks. SCP-6004 continued heading northeast towards Beijing, with widespread thunderstorms and anomalous plant growth following in its wake. Foundation and Gork forces began treatment and organization of evacuated civilians within various staging areas throughout China. Task Force 341, tasked with aiding in the evacuation of Beijing, was halted by armed forces on the outskirts of the Jinjinji metropolitan region and ordered to exit the area. Despite multiple attempts at diplomacy, Task Force 341 was forced to withdraw. Upon exiting the area, they sent the following communication to Site 40. Evacuation of Beijing is impossible. The military has locked down the city on the orders of the General Secretary and has declared the Foundation to be enemies of the state. Advise all Foundation activity within Chinese borders to be carried out with caution. At this time, the SCPS Indominus was approximately 40 minutes from being in range of SCP-6004. Multiple reports of military attacks on Foundation and Gork forces began to reach Site-40, and it was decided that all task forces were to withdraw. This decision was met with resistance, but was carried out. By 5.03 p.m., 
all foundation activity within northeast China had ceased, with all forces returning to their home sites with minimal losses. Satellite monitoring and local surveillance cameras showed SCP-6004 continuing to approach the Beijing in spite of increasingly thick resistance from the military. At 5.09 p.m., the following communication was received from Agent Zhou Wei. They're going to launch nuclear weapons. I can't stop them. Following this communication, the SCPS Indominus was ordered to fire the Mongoose prototype as soon as possible. The Indominus replied in the affirmative, estimating that they would be in range in 12 minutes. Video Log Incident 6004-8 Date, the 27th of October 2020 Note, at 5.14 p.m., SCP-6004 reached the outskirts of the Jingjinji metropolitan region. The following events were recorded by numerous foundation and civilian cameras and satellites. Begin log. 5.14 p.m., air raid sirens sound out over the cities, and civilians remaining on the streets can be seen fleeing indoors. A very large storm front can be seen approaching from the southwest, with SCP-6004 within it. Multiple military aircraft are engaging it to no effect. 5.14 p.m. Thunderstorms rapidly form over the entire region. Heavy rain begins to fall, and large masses of vegetation form from the ground and architecture of the cities, causing massive structural damages. Numerous lightning bolts repeatedly strike multiple skyscrapers. 5.14 p.m. Site 40 Command relays SCP-6004's arrival to the SCPS Indominus. The Indominus continues its approach. 5.15 p.m. SCP-6004 coils above the city of Baoding and observes the city. Lightning strikes cease. 5.16 p.m. SCP-6004 strikes at Baoding, destroying seven skyscrapers. It rises before hitting the ground and proceeds to scrape the ground with its mouth, forcing numerous vehicles and structures down its throat. Multiple CCTV cameras show civilians falling into the throat, which does not appear different to that of non-anomalous snakes. 5.17 p.m. SCP-6004 fully reaches the ground and proceeds to slowly circle the city, moving in an inward spiral as it swallows terrain and buildings. Some buildings are spared, with CCTV footage showing SCP-6004 passing through them harmlessly. 5.17 p.m. Military aircraft begin bombing runs on SCP-6004. Multiple bombs detonate on its back with no effect. One aircraft is seen to deliberately ram the eye of SCP-6004, detonating violently. SCP-6004 fails to notice and continues the consumption of Baoding. 5.18 p.m. Multiple tornadoes and lightning bolts strike multiple sites within the Jingjinji metropolitan region, continuing along paths throughout the area targeting skyscrapers in particular. 5.19 p.m. SCP-6004 finishes consuming Baoding and rears its head into the air, ignoring the efforts of the Air Force. It turns to face Beijing before pushing off the remains of Baoding and rapidly approaching the city. 5.20 p.m. Air Force retreats from SCP-6004 and Beijing. The SCPS Indominus reports it will be in range of SCP-6004 in 70 seconds. 5.20 p.m. Numerous sirens sound within Beijing as SCP-6004 approaches, and a recording of China's head of state plays over citywide loudspeakers, stating the following, Better for Beijing to fall than for all of China to be overrun. 5.21 p.m. SCPS Indominus reports to Site 40 Command that SCP-6004 is now within range of the Mongoose prototype and requests permission to fire. 5.21 p.m. Multiple simultaneous launches are detected from within China. Satellite imaging identifies these launches as being 12 nuclear warheads. 5.21 p.m. 
tornadoes and lightning strikes continue to ravage the area, with large masses of vegetation forming over the ruins. 5.22 p.m. Twelve nuclear warheads simultaneously strike SCP-6004 on separate lengths of its body and head 43 kilometers southwest from Beijing. The resulting blasts are estimated to have yields ranging from 5 to 16 megatons, causing SCP-6004 to recoil. Multiple windows within a 68 kilometers radius shutter. 5.22 p.m. SCPS Indominus reports sighting of a flash of light from the direction of Beijing. Rainfall, tornadoes and lightning strikes cease in the area, and the upper portion of SCP-6004 is obscured by mushroom clouds. 5.22 p.m. 05 Command orders the SCPS Indominus to charge the Mongoose prototype. On-board cameras show the barrels of the mongoose aimed towards SCP-6004 and the device begins to emit green light and high-pitched wailing vocalizations. 5.23 p.m. SCP-6004 oars and rears above Beijing. Its head and much of its body is aflame, but does not display any sign of damage or burning. SCP-6004 oars again and tosses its head violently extinguishing the flames before turning towards Beijing and bodily flinging itself at the city while roaring and emitting multicolored bolts of electricity at the capital, causing catastrophic damage. Thunderstorms, tornadoes and winds in excess of 450 km per hour spontaneously form over the area, causing significant damage. 5.23 p.m. SCP-6004 strikes at the ground repeatedly and thrashes its tail across the region, leaving multiple large craters. SCPS Indominus reports that the mongoose prototype will be ready to fire shortly. 5.24 p.m. Air Force fighter jets return and engages SCP-6004, with multiple aircraft deliberately colliding with it. SCP-6004 continues to strike the Earth, with numerous lightning bolts impacting the aircraft. Lava begins to emerge from multiple craters as a result of SCP-6004-S strikes. 5.24 p.m. Project Mongoose technicians aboard the SCPS Indominus begin the firing sequence. The prototype begins wailing more intensely and emitting flashes of dark green light. 5.25 p.m. The last remaining aircraft retreat from SCP-6004. 5.28 p.m. SCP-6004 ceases striking at the ground and surveys the area. Tornadoes and lightning storms dissipate, and vegetation begins to form in areas unaffected by the emergence of lava. The entirety of Beijing and the surrounding area has been entirely demolished with no structures surviving. SCP-6004 begins to roar and vocalize repeatedly. 5.28 p.m. Project Mongoose technicians report that the prototype is ready to be fired. 5 command grants permission to fire. 5.29 p.m. Project Mongoose fires once the entity's coordinates are confirmed. Crew of SCPS Indominus lost upon activation. A large, sustained beam comprised of, data expunged, fires from Project Mongoose, accompanied by an intense screaming sound. Satellite visuals are lost as a result of the weapon's firing. 5.30 p.m. A fault occurs within the Mongoose prototype, causing an energy failure and cessation of fire and vocalization. 5.30 p.m. Satellite visuals are regained as weapons vocalizations cease. Entity appears to have taken notice of the beam. 5.31 p.m. SCP-6004 rapidly propels itself into the cloud cover, visibly tracking the mongoose beam as it passes and impacts the Jinder Mountains, destroying approximately 32 square kilometers. 5.32 p.m. The entity emits a low vocalization and approaches the SCPS Indominus, entering the South China Sea and raising its head out of the water to inspect the Project Mongoose prototype for the following four minutes before submerging itself beneath the surface and leaving the area. End log
Following the departure of SCP-6004 from the area, no search and rescue operations were carried out in the Jingjinji metropolitan region. The death toll from this incident has been estimated as being in excess of 140 million. Investigation into the former site of Beijing showed the formation of three fault lines, previously undiscovered species of flora and fauna, and masses of human remains. SCP-6004 was tracked to the Pacific Ocean before being lost in deep waters. After a period of several hours it was deemed to be safe for the SCPS Indominus and Project Mongoose prototype to be recovered by the Foundation, with further research and development to be carried out. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts, leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.